What's going on, man? How are you? Doing good, yeah. Excited to be uh, to be back again? Yeah, man. It's uh, Coming off a loss makes you really hungry to get that next victory. And, uh, Saturday night is going to go down. Yeah, and I think um, you know you were you were praised after that fight for your, some of the the toughness you showed, the heart you showed. Um, I guess what were your takeaways from it? Was there any sort of silver linings? Was there any learning lessons that you were able to to take out of that one? No, I man, it is what it is. I try not to look back on the wins and losses. He got me. Move on. I'm about to get the next one. Yeah, and what do you think? Uh, what do you think of this matchup? You were supposed to fight Pat Sabatini. Now you got Jamal Emmers. Um, the change, does it mean anything to you? Is it, do you like I feel this? like it's better for the fans. I feel like uh, the Pat Sabatini fight would have been a little bit less exciting. I think this is going to be a good, exciting fight for the fans to see. So when you have that sort of switch like midway through your camp, does, does everything change or do you kind of stay on the same path? Um, I mean, not really. We just train and grinding and uh, we just switch up the visualization. You know what I'm saying? We just focusing on a different guy. I believe it's been uh, it'll be about nine months between fights for you. Was this? Uh, did you want to take some time off? Or was yeah, I took some time off. To um, I just my wife gave birth to my first son, so yeah, I spent a little time with them. That's amazing. Well, how's it feel? I mean, we're gonna see. We got that daddy strength now, so we're gonna see when I grab him. In, in that time, I thought it was interesting. It seemed like your name was coming up a lot in post-fight interviews and people calling you out. I don't know if you if you heard. I mean, any that's of that. good. That's good. I mean, it's the name of the game. Stay a little bit relevant when you're not. Yeah, and I guess uh, where do you feel like uh, a win over Jamal will get you? Is it kind of propel you back to, to get another ranked sort of opponent? Or? I mean, I would like to try to get back a shot at that top 15, but everything right now is focused on Saturday night. Thanks. Nate, next to Nolan here. Uh, you're obviously originally supposed to fight Pat Sabatini. You said Emmers to you is a more exciting fight. Why do you feel that way? What about their styles do you like more in Emmers? I just feel like uh, Emmers is more of a, you know, he's going to come out, we're going to strike. Uh, I think Pat would have been desperate for the takedown immediately. It would have been a lot of wrestling. His game plan would be to uh, take me down, trying to hold me there. So I'm not saying that a Jamal Emmers is not going to try to take me down and hold me down, but the likelihood is you're going to see some great exchanges. Do you still want that Sabatini fight someday? I mean, we'll just see what the year. I would like to skip over all that and go straight to something better, if I'm being honest. I mean, that's the name. And then last one for me, you have one of the most exciting personalities in the sport. Your fight style is very exciting. How do you think a crowd like Atlantic City lends to your style opposed to, you know, like an apex fight where there's less fans? Oh, man, it's just more thrilling. It's more gladiator when there's fans in the stands and they get, they get to see it and they get to enjoy it and they get to go home and think about that night. Right here. How is the city of Clarksville doing, brother? I know they went. Oh, man, we're bouncing back, man. We're bouncing back great. Everybody came together. It's amazing to see when a uh, tragedy hits, how fast people are out. You know, it's country lifestyle, so there's trucks on the street immediately cleaning up. Are they still accepting donations, or is it? I mean, I, I think you, we raised up a quite a bit of money. There's been plenty, and, uh, I mean, everybody's bouncing back. It's just one of those things to where I, I sure hope another turnout don't hit, but. The resilience of Clarksville is always going to be tip-top shape. The song "You and Me" probably like one of the hardest walkout songs I've ever heard with Yellow Wolf. Yeah. Um, are you a big fan of those guys like Jelly Roll? Struggle. Yeah, them? man. I actually a big fan of Jelly Roll and all of them. Uh, you know, just growing up there, in Middle Tennessee, of course. You know, uh, they're all the great dudes. I actually uh, chit chat with Jelly Roll sometimes. What do you think about his rise? Because, like, I remember him as, like, Jelly Roll the rapper. and then Yeah, the man, it's crazy how sometimes you got to switch it up to get a little notice. And, uh, man, he's doing it. He's booming. So I'm happy for him. I'm actually from uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, which isn't too far from Clarksville. Um, I was wondering, you know, you, you say Hoptown? Yeah, Hoptown. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I was just want to ask, you know, yeah, coming from Clarksville, you know, what it's like knowing that, you're essentially the most successful fighter to really emerge from around that area. You know, you've had success overseas, you've come back to the UFC, and you're still climbing the ranks. So, yeah, man, like, it's just always been a privilege and an honor of mine to um, all around the world I've fought, and the whole time I've been yelling out Clarksville, and uh, it's just something that when I look back on it, nobody's done that. You know, everybody usually bounces out. You get too big for your britches and you don't want to claim the city you're from, but I'm gonna claim it to the day I die. I'm gonna be, you know, I was born and raised there. I'm gonna be buried there. So it's just one of those things to, I've always had a chip like that. Yeah, Wilma Rudolph was that girl, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to give me a little street name or something. 
All right.